Hello, my name is Brian Leonard. I'm one of the product managers here in the HMI SCADA group here at Aviva. In this video, I'm going to cover the project creation and usage of Integration Studio. Um, specifically, some of the, pro the uh, topics will include the creation of projects, uh, editing them, uh, creating sessions of those projects, and then once you've established these sessions, how do you connect to them? And then once you've connected to them, what, what are some of the tools available to you once you have made these connections? Um, I will also be putting uh, some links to these topics in the comment section below for you to access them directly. So with that, let's get started. Uh, so I've just logged in to my tenant for Integration Studio, and, and I'm brought to the project uh, overview. Uh, so right now I have nothing to find, so what I want to go ahead and do is create a project template. So to do that, I click the big pink button here. And once I do that, I'm brought into the Create Project Workflow. I'm going to give it a project name. So I'm going to do 2017 Update 2, a uh, three-node architecture. This would be a longer description, so I'll say hey, this, something longer, like a text-based description here. reference and then I'm going to do the assistant suite definition so I'm going to select between uh, the available options here um, I'm going to select my WSP 2017 update 2 there and this will be the default hosting region uh, now when I actually create a session of this project um, I could uh, modify that if I want to this is just going to be what I want to have as the default so I'll do the West US and click next and this is where I'm going to configure my nodes. Um, so right now there's just one node set up, and I will just call this one my GR node. And it's going to be the system platform type. And this is going to be the machine type here. So I'm going to select, this is going to be my higher end machine. So I'm going to do the DS3 uh, v2. And if I want to look at the specs, I can click this little I, and it'll have the amount of cores and amount of RAM available. And then the cost per hour um, in credits um, maybe of each one. And then in a typical work week, um, that would be the sort of the extrapolation of that. Uh, now, again, I want it to be a three node. So I'm going to click here to add another node. And I'm going to do the second one. We'll call this to historian. And let's say this one will be the mid-range product. And I'll do submit there. And then I'll click another node. And this will be my runtime. And this will just be my single core machine here. And I can again see the, uh, the specs if I want to there. Submit that one. And if I want to make any changes, I would just delete them here or uh, just go and click add a new one if I want to that way. Click next, and this is what I'm going to select the uh, the roles of each uh, device uh, or each VM and what is installed on each one of them. Um, I'm going to create a test Galaxy by default. Um, this is going to be my development one, so I'm going to click uh, Development Server, um, and let's see. I'll just put, I'll put everything on this one because if I want to just do any any development, maybe except for the historian, I will just do the development on that. And maybe even just do test, a local uh, runtime test if I want to uh, that way. Uh, my historian node, I'll just make this the historian server. Um, and for my runtime node, that will just be my runtime client. Okay. Click next. Um, this is the automatic shutdown scheduler. Uh, now, um, the way we charge for this is per hour. So if you accidentally leave the machine running, you can run into unexpected costs. So we have this uh, automatic shutdown scheduler built in to avoid some un un unexpected uh, charges uh, on your account. Um, so we have a couple different ways to do the shutdown. Um, the first one would be um, the duration based. So if you want to have it run for, let's say, once you start it up, it runs for eight hours, and then we'll just automatically shut down um, after that uh, that interval. Or you can do it based off of, off of a specific time of day. Um, that's the one I usually like to use um, for demos. And I, I, I always um, have this set. Um, I, I am notorious for leaving the machines running for doing any sort of testing or even demos, um, and I will forget about it and leave the machine running. Um, so I always leave them um, leave the shutdown scheduler set, and you could. So this is real simple. You just set the time. Let's just say it's going to be six thirty uh, p.m. and it'll automatically select my my time zone that I'm in right now. So I'm in Pacific right now. So that's what we'll, we'll set. And that's pretty much it. Um, I'm going to also select whether or not it's going to be a personal or a public project. That's really the only configuration on this screen. Um, I'm just going to make this one a public one for everyone. Um, this is a that sort of an overview of what I've selected. Here's the name. Uh, the region that I've selected, uh, the cost per hour of all the machines, if they're all running, um, it'll be 1.201 credits per hour. Um, and in a given work week, 40-hour uh, week, um, it's about 50 credits an hour. And then the 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 roles of each device here. Uh, so then I'm going to go ahead and click Create Project. And what this will do, um, it'll create this the, the project template. And you can see here, this is the one that I've created. And um, I can go in. 
and say, well, you know what I'm going to do now? So, or actually, I'll take a look and see there's no sessions. I will go ahead and create a new session um, of this template. So once I click this new session, I can go in and kind of do any last minute configurations that I want to do for this specific um, um, iteration or this session of the, the project. Um, I can also send an email notification. So when it's done, it'll send me uh, the email. If there's anything wrong, it'll also send notifications there as well. Um, you can send them to multiple people if you want to as well, just by putting a semicolon and then adding more, more um, uh, email addresses there. Um, the, the default region. Um, we also have a, uh, a bandwidth checker here. So if you click Help Me Choose, it'll bring up a, a utility that will just do sort of a bandwidth check. And I'll do this here to a network speed test. And there's nothing like a video that shows scrolling uh, um, meters on, on a video. That is just excellent, excellent video content. So um, yeah, bear with me here. So once that's done doing the network speed test, it'll come back and say, okay, which one is closest? I'm actually on a, uh, my phone right now. So um, I have different latencies. This is basically just the, the latency of the, 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 the wireless that I've got on my phone. So it's not, not the, the speediest, but this is about the best one I'll get. So I'll click select. So I'll create a, a session name here. This will be um, the actual name of uh, the instance that has been created of this project. So the, the, the project name is sort of the reference architecture of the, of the template. And this is the actual instance name of uh, the actual of the, the template. So I will say it's going to be Brian Sandbox there. And then I'll be able to go down to each one of the nodes that I've configured and look at the uh, what I've selected by default. But let's just say on this instance, I want to say this Astoria node is going to be a runtime client as well. So I'll select that. And then I'll click Launch Session. And once I do that, it will actually start the creation of the virtual machines and the dynamic installation of the software based off of what was uh, configured in the project uh, creation or the project template. So let's see that there's a notification there that that's been created. And I can go in and take a look at the status of it. So these are the three nodes. It's starting them up. So you'll see here that the machines are currently set to starting. Uh, once the process is all done and everything's installed, uh, they will be started and green, and then we'll be able to connect to them. Uh, this process typically takes between 20 and 45 minutes. So for now, I'm going to go grab a bite to eat and I will come right back. Okay, well, it looks like uh, all the nodes are up and running right now, and I'm uh, gonna finish that later. So right now what I'm gonna do so I'm going to go back into my projects. So now I'm going to go back to the, uh, the overview. And then I can go and click this link here. And this will take me to the, um, the connection links. So if I'm going to connect to the GR node, I will click the GR. And I'll click this uh, InStudio section here. This will take me to the browser connection for it. Or if I want to download it via RDP, I will do it that way. So the first thing I'll do, I'll just try doing the RDP selection for, it, for you here. So right here, we're going to have the username and password that's default uh, defaulted for it. Um, so I'll click download the RDP file for it. And then I'll just go ahead and copy that password for me. Um, in the RDP file, the uh, username will already be um, pre-loaded for you. So I just need to copy the password. So once that RDP file has been uh, downloaded here, enter in the password. And I'll bring it over to this screen here. And here I will just connect to my machine already. So let me, the resolution might be a little off. Going from one screen to another. And there we are. Now it's automatically selected. So my network configuration there. And now I can go in and start developing applications if I want to. Uh, now let's say, for example, I um, didn't want to download the RDP or let's say my ports are blocked. Um, if I, that happens all the time. Let's say maybe I'm an SI and uh, everything's fine on my local network, but then I go to a customer site and I want to be able to connect um, using their Wi-Fi, um, but their ports are blocked. So, uh, but I want to, so I want to make that connection. So I'll go back to the Apple links here, click the GR node, and then I'm gonna click this session here, and this will be able to establish a session, a session for this uh, VM within the browser. That way. So see here, it's the same session that was created, um, and I can access it that way, um, just with using the standard port 80. Um, so now when I'm in this connection here, let's say I want to be able to um, ask somebody to uh, shadow me. So in order to do that, I'll click this little link here at the top. You'll notice that when it's in the browser session, there's a little um, um, drop-down menu available here. Um, from here, I can do the actions and do share, share session. So I click that, and this is the address that I would send somebody. So I'd, I'd send them that address, and this would be the password for it. 
and then they would uh, connect to it and they would just basically be able to shadow my session here. So this is great for things like if you want to show um, a, a customer, if you're on SI, you want to show the customer uh, what you're doing so far, or if you're on tech support, you want to do a tech support call, uh, you can do it this way. Real simple and easy, built into it. Um, if you want to do a file transfer, uh, you would click this uh, file transfer button here, and then you would, let's say you want to upload, you click that. And so this is essentially the my, my local network, that, or my local um, drive here. So let's say I want to take um, just this, this RDP file and I want to upload it to the device, uh, the VM in the cloud there. So I click that. It is a relatively small file, so it was super, super quick. That upload is complete. And now it put it on a local drive on the machine or locally mapped uh, network drive for the file transfers um, of this machine or through the, through the browser connections. So I would click th this PC. You'll notice uh, there's the drives that we have here. We have the local disk C. Uh, a floppy drive here connection there. This is temporary storage um, that will get periodically deleted, so it's meant to be peri uh, temporary. This is the uh, network share. So you'll see this is where the RDP file is uh, there, and I could just take this and just drag this over uh, to my desktop if I wanted to. This doesn't really make much sense because it's actually an RDP file to the local uh, machine, but um, it could be a text document. It could be your um, your Galaxy that you've uh, exported and you want to import uh, to it. It can be anything you want it to be. Um, you can also do things like uh, just map it to a, um, a, a, a an internet-based drive. Let's say a, a OneDrive or something like that. You would upload this file to OneDrive um, on your local uh, machine, your on-premise machine, and then from the VM you can even just make the transfer uh, there just through the uh, another cloud-based drive there that way. Well, that about sums it up for this video. If you have any questions or comments, please feel free to reach out to your local sales organization or tech support, um, or even a feedback at aviva.com. Or if you want to contact me directly, my email address is brian.leonard at aviva.com. Again, my name is Brian Leonard. I'm the product manager for Integration Studio, and I thank you for your time.